You may have seen these vintage designs in restaurants, shops, or even art galleries. They're pretty famous and they're absolutely beautiful. Now it can be difficult finding high resolution scans of these images. In this video, I'll do a quick walkthrough of where you can find these designs. They're free, legal, and in the public domain. And that means that you can use them for any art project, even putting them on a t-shirt or creating designs that you can sell commercially. So let's go visit historical Paris with these spectacular works of art. Hey there, I hope you're having a great day. It can be tough to find these images, so when you're on Google, what you want to do is search for the Van Gogh Museum French Print Collection. And when you do that, you're going to get a couple different results here that come back. And so what you want to do is look for this Van Gogh Museum NL, that's the Netherlands Van Gogh Museum. And I'm just going to click on this first one here. And you're going to get to the French print collection. Now this is the part that just drives me absolutely bonkers about these museum websites. And I hate to complain because they're free public domain images and obviously the museum's trying their best. But I just want to see the collection. And so I'm looking through this and it's like here's how the French print collection works and we got this thing and here's the background and blah blah blah. But there's no actual link to the actual collection. And so what you'd want to do, the easiest way to find it, in my mind, is just to click on any one of these pictures. So I'm going to click on the cat. This is the famous picture of the cat. We've all seen this in like restaurants and stuff, right? So here's the actual image. And by the way, it's really high resolution. If I click on the little plus button down on the bottom right, I can scroll in. I can scroll even more, even more. I mean, that's a really nice high res picture. It just keeps going, right? It's like, oh my goodness. Hello, Mr. Kitty. All right, so here is the actual design. Okay, I'll just zoom back out. And what you want to do is on this page, this little link up here at the top, search the front print collection. That's what I want. I'm going to click on that and that's going to get me to this page. Now, I'm going to put the link to this in the video description. So if you if you can see the link, just click on the link. But if you need to search for it in Google, that's how you do it. It's called the French Print Collection and there's 1994 results in this collection. And they're just absolutely drop dead gorgeous pictures. So I've got a few examples here that I'm just going to run through. I have searched for cat. I typed into the window here where it says search the French French print collection. I typed in cat and there's 31 results that come back. And so I'm just going to run through a couple cat pictures just to start. Here's just one. Again, you could use this as just art as is. You can zoom out, you can zoom in. If I zoom in, it actually like you're really zooming in. I mean, you can see the individual details here. It just takes a second for the website to kind of recalibrate, but you can see the individual ink splashes on these artworks. It's absolutely glorious. And then it's got the name over on the right hand side. You can scroll back out. Now to download this is very easy over on the right hand side. There's a little download button. You just click the little download button and it says terms and conditions. Please request separately to use the image for commercial purposes. Now this is where people kind of freak out because they go, hold on, it's telling me I can't use this for commercial purposes. If the artwork is old, i.e. more than 70 years past the artist's death in the United States or 50 years in Canada, every country's got its own little rules. Generally speaking, these works are in the public domain. So just as an, and I just want to show you how this works because I know people, I, I, I've said this before in the videos where this is public domain and people either they don't believe me or they want proof. And so I totally get that. Okay. So I'm going to try to explain now how we can find out that this is public domain. This piece of art is public domain. And here we can see this is from the Van Gogh Museum. It says images of the Van Gogh Museum 
up to and including certain pixels may be downloaded and distributed for non-commercial use. To use the images that are still subject to copyright, please contact these guys. And if you'd like to use these images for commercial purposes, please contact. And most people stop at that point and they go, ah, it's all right. So what's going to happen is you're going to have to use your best judgment about whether or not the underlying work is in the public domain and then use your, your judgment call on whether or not you feel that gives you the right to take that photo and use it. I want to show you an example of where this would happen. So for example, this artwork is by the artist Seophile Alexander Steinlin, 1896. Okay, if I go to Google and I type in when is that artwork in the public domain, it will literally give me an answer. Google is amazing and it will say it was in the public domain in its own country on this date for most countries. And if you look at the Google Art Project and you take a look at Wikimedia, so Wikimedia, for example, by definition is public domain and this is one of the posters. And as I scroll on down, what I'm really looking for is why this is in the public domain. So not necessarily the individual poster, but the reason why. So I scroll down and I can see this is a faithful photographic reproduction of a public domain work of art. Here's what I care about. The work of art itself is in the public domain in its source country for the following reason. The author died in 1923. This work is in the public domain because it's the author's life plus 95 years. Now it's different in every country, right? In Canada, it's the author's life plus 50. In the United States, it's the author's life plus 70. Blah, blah, blah. There's different countries, right? But the idea is if you can tie it back to a source that says it's public domain and it's a reputable source, like a Wikimedia, for example, then you're good. So again, I, I just wanted to make a note of that because I notice people sometimes get stressed out about the idea of it being in the public domain. Just remember, you're part of the public. So if it says it's in the public domain, you are a legitimate owner of this work. By definition, the museum and whoever else has put it in the public domain or due to the author passing away, it is in the public domain. So I just wanted to mention that really quickly, but let's jump back into some more cool French photos. Okay, it's no secret I could look at cat pictures all day long. Here's another one with cats attacking this young girl who's just trying to give them some milk. Again, it's very, very high res. And it gives you stuff here at the bottom about what the uh, actual object is, like that you're looking at here. I'm not a huge fan of that, to be honest with you. I'd rather just look at the actual image. So you just have to kind of scroll down and you can see it there. You can also just download the image and you can just view it in another browser if you want it as well. But if you're interested in seeing how, you know, the detail on some of these cats, for example, you know, just let the image set inside the browser and you can see it's just spectacular works here. If I scroll too quickly, the resolution is so high that it takes the browser a second to reset. But you can see here the whiskers, the little dots of ink, it's absolutely spectacular. Here's another one. This is a Chien Noir cabaret poster. And again, you can just zoom in on it. It's like an actual poster too. It's the actual, like you can see the right hand side is the paper. So you can always digitally clean up these images too, if you like. You can go into Photoshop or, you know, some sort of image software. But you can see there, that's an absolutely beautiful picture French artwork for the wall or for whatever reason you'd like to use it for. Now, I'm going to go back here to the search window and I've got 31 results in the collection because I searched for cat. If you search for something and then you want to get back to just this collection, the wrong way to do it is to click this search the entire collection because that will actually take you back to the entire museum and you don't want that because now we're no longer searching inside the French stuff. We're searching inside of, we're searching cat inside of the entire museum, which, which might be what you want. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to search inside the French col print collection, just remove cat from the search term and then just click search. So you're just searching for nothing at this point and everything will come up. 1994 results. And then you can see here, there's filters along the left-hand side as well. 
So you can look for technique. You know, let's look at like color etchings, for example. So these are all color etchings. So I'll just open up that one. I'll pick here a couple at random. So here's one, for example, this is an etching, Victorian etching. And again, you can zoom in and it's quite detailed. So if you're an art student, if you're looking for a high quality reproduction of some sort of French artwork, this is certainly a viable alternative here. Again, this was made in 1893 and you can do a similar search about the public domain you know, whether the status of it is in the public domain or not, chances are it will be. If it's sitting in a museum and it's from like 150 years ago, chances are very good that these are in the public domain. Here's another one. Again, if you're an art student and you're interested in having this for your wall, or if you're just interested in just looking at it, again, absolutely spectacular. I'll just zoom in. You can see the level of detail. You can also see the underlying paper as well. I really like this one. This one's like a etching in two different colors, fishermen and the lady looking at them. And again, I'll just scroll in so you can see the detail of the etching itself. As a person who draws once in a while, I'm just blown away by these etchings. I just think they've captured the soul and the spirit of, you know, the romanticism of France. I just think it's absolutely fa fantastic. So there's a number of different areas you can look in on the left hand side. You can also just remove the filter as well. And that will take you right back to the collection. There's a lot here that you can search through and there's just a ton of beautiful, beautiful artworks that are French in nature. Some are photographs, some are etchings, some are illustrations. This is an etching that actually looks like a photograph. It's so detailed, my goodness. This one's called Duet Chamber Music. And again, using software like Photoshop or Affinity, you could remove this vintage uh, color out of the background if you wanted, and you could use this on any sort of background if that's what you chose to do. So I hope you found that helpful. A lot of tips and tricks here on this absolutely beautiful collection of artwork, the French print collection as part of the Van Gogh Museum. Take care, everyone.